Hello there, you're watching Dan Ski and this is the place to be to develop your creative skills. In this tutorial, we're going to learn all about gradients in Adobe Illustrator. So what is a gradient? Well, a gradient can be anything transitioning from one thing to another thing. So in the context of design and Adobe Illustrator, we're going to be looking at color gradients, transitioning from one color to another color to perhaps even another color, and you could go on forever. So we're going to jump into Illustrator now and you can see on screen I have some pre-created gradients and if you'd like to download these there will be a link in the description to download this illustrator file and you can use these gradients however you like. So let's just move these out of the way for the moment. So I've created a new artboard in Illustrator a thousand pixels wide and a thousand pixels high and I'm just going to select any shape tool so let's go with the rectangle tool and just left click and hold shift and it fills this with a solid green color. Now gradients can be applied to both strokes, also known as outlines, or the fills of shapes. These can be any shape that you can access from here or shapes with the pen tool. Pretty much anything that you can create in Illustrator, you can add a gradient to it for the most part. So we've got one square on screen. And what I'm going to do is go over to the gradient panel on the right. If you can't see that, don't worry, just go up to Window and down to Gradient. And if you click anywhere on the gradient slider, typically we'll add the default black to white gradient, but because I've been obviously working with the existing gradients already, we've got this. So let me just reset that, just so we're both on the same page. So there we go, we've got the default black to white gradient. Just click anywhere on the gradient slider to get that. And you can adjust from one side here so you can make the black color more dominant than the white. You can also bring the white in as well. So it makes that gradient a lot, or that graduation a lot less smooth and a lot harsher, which might be the effect you're going for. But you can also adjust the midpoint. So we can pull this to the left and to the right. So again, that's another way of kind of, I guess, shifting the power that one gradient swatch might have over another without actually moving the gradients themselves. Now you can add additional colors to your gradient slider. If you hover along the bottom here, you can see that plus icon and just single left click and it will add an additional swatch. And if you want to add another color, you can double click on any of these swatches and it will bring up your swatch panel. You can also switch to the color, color panel here as well. If you'd like a specific color, you can enter your six digit hex value there or adjust the sliders. So just go ahead and pick another color. Let's go with this. And it will add that to your gradient slider. And you can also left click and just drag down and it will drag a swatch off and then you can reposition this. Now you can do this manually by dragging or you can click the drop down or enter in a specific value. So if I wanted the blue swatch that I've got selected at 25% location, so a quarter of the gradient slider, I can just type 25, press return, and it will move it there. So I can also add another one just by clicking along the bottom, set that at 50%. So this is a way of accurately positioning gradient swatches certain distances apart from each other. And with a certain swatch selected, you can adjust the opacity as well. So we could drop this down to 0%. So this one on the left will run to transparency. So we could drag both of these ones off, drag the blue all the way to the right. And then we have a kind of blue cyan color running to transparency. Now the minimum number of swatches that you must have on a gradient is two. You can't have any less than two. Sorry, that's just the way it is. So again, we could double click this black. Let's go to a different color. And of course, it's still got that transparency, so we can bring this up to 100%. Now we can quickly and easily reverse the gradient just by clicking this little button here, and it will instantly just do a 180 and swap that gradient around. Very, very useful. We can also adjust the angle. So we could set this at a 45 degree angle. At the moment it runs from left to right, and now we can have it run from one of the corners to the other corners. And you can enter any angle you like just to see how the gradient will run from one direction to another. Now something else we can do is we can select type. So linear is going from one direction to another, so left to right, top to bottom, 
radial will emanate from the center and go towards the edge. Now again, you can swap this by toggling this button, which is really handy. But something else we can also do with a radial gradient is you'll see this setting here, aspect ratio. Now at the moment, this is 100%. So the gradient emanating from the center is circular. In fact, let's just make this a bit larger. So you can see it's a circular gradient. And if we click the drop down, we could adjust this. So if we set this to 50%, you'll see that it becomes 50% less in height. So more of an ellipse shape. And we could go even further. Or we could go the other way and go to 600. So it becomes very, very tall and doesn't increase in width. So you can adjust the aspect ratio of your gradient there. And as you probably saw a moment ago, just adjusting the size, the rotation, your gradient will still stay pretty constant while you do any changes like that. But you don't have to do all of this from the gradient panel. Illustrator actually has a gradient tool over on the left. So once you've added your first gradient to any kind of shape, you can select the gradient tool and you will see these options. So you can manually move this around so you can move that central point there. And we could switch back to linear and you'll see we get a different set of controls, but you've got the same gradient slider. So we can pull this along. And again, we can hover along the bottom, add swatches, double click, add even more swatches. That looks absolutely terrible, but we're going to add it anyway. So you've got the same controls live on your uh, composition now that you would have over here. It's exactly the same set of controls, but this is a much more uh, uh, more effective way of adjusting the gradient in real time. So you can quickly and easily just drag, drag these around, take these off, you know, just adjust it all in real time. So you can move that depending on which color you'd like to be more dominant. You can hover over here, you'll see this little symbol next to the arrow. That will adjust the length of the gradient. And you also get the rotation symbol. So you have to carefully hover around certain points on this gradient slider, but then you can adjust the rotation and then move that around. So two different ways of editing gradients. You've got the gradient panel here on the right, and then you've got the gradient tool on the left. Now both of them do exactly the same thing. It just depends entirely on what works for you. And something else I would also recommend is setting up your gradients as global swatches. Because with these, I've set them all up as global swatches. So if I were to go in, for example, let's just zoom in a bit and change, I wanted to change this color here, this light blue cyan color. If I wanted to change that, I can simply double click on the swatch, select preview, and then start making lots of adjustments. Now, if that swatch wasn't global, this wouldn't be updating this instance of the color within that gradient, and I would have to manually change the color and then go and re-add it with the gradient slider. So that's a fantastic way of saving time with global swatches. To make a swatch global, just double click it and tick the global box. So then if you update that swatch at a later date, any instance of that color within your illustrated document will update as well. So when you're cementing in lots of different swatches within gradients, it makes it a lot easier to just have them set up as global swatches. So you can literally, oh, I need to update that gradient, open the swatch, a few clicks, and then you've updated it. So it makes it nice and easy. And there we go. That is all about gradients in Adobe Illustrator. As always, guys, please feel free to leave any questions or comments down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care, and I'll see you next time.